welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Why Bombay Jayashree? I grew up in Bombay. Um, fortunate that I grew up in Bombay. Um, there is a system in traditional Carnatic music, uh, music to put the name of the place that you come from. And it normally used to be a village or a part of a place in, in the south. Um, more to explain what the musician brings forth in terms of style, his lineage. Does he belong to the fourth or fifth generation from a family of musicians, etc., etc.? So when I came in from Bombay, um, that was the only place they could put in front of my name, Jayashri, and that's why Bombay Jayashri. So when you say you came down, you're talking about coming down from Bombay to Madras or Chennai. (laughs) Yes, right. But you were born in Calcutta, grew up in Bombay, and now live in Madras. So you have lived in three of the five metropolitan cities in India. Absolutely. My father used to work in Kolkata. Uh, that's when my parents lived for about 15 years and I was born there. And soon after that, when I was about two and a half, three, the family moved to Bombay. And I moved to Chennai to learn music from my guru, Sri Lal Gudiji Jairaman. So that's why the three cities. So you've had a lot of gurus. Uh, your first gurus were your own parents. Yes, They were Carnatic music singers or teachers? Both my parents came from families that taught and practiced music. But um, I'm the first performer in the family. Both my parents taught music from the time they woke up to the time they went to bed. There was music in the house. They were teaching students. Family used to gather only to sing together. Friends would walk in because they shared the connection of music. So this was the home that I grew up in. So was there any particular kind of music or only Carnatic? Only Carnatic music, just so Carnatic. you woke up in the morning and I'm assuming you listen to the radio. No, my father's practice. Oh. Yes, my father would wake up at four in the morning to sing Omkara and practice. Uh, for the longest time, I don't remember um, having a tape recorder, a cassette player or anything of that sort at home. It was only a radio that came much later once I went to college. So it was only the sound of music that came from my parents and the students that learned from them. Then how did you develop an interest in film music? My mother was uh, uh, very interested in all kinds of music. She's a very interesting person and uh, she loved the voice of Lata Mangeshkar. She loved the music that came out of the radio, which was Mohammad Rafi or Kishore Kumar. And uh, she would make my brothers, and I have two brothers who both who both of them are older to me, and me listen to a lot of um, film music that came from the radio. And that's how my interest flared up. Do you remember your early memories of Hindi music? Absolutely, as yeah. much as I. Nena Barse, Lag Jagale. Um, every song from the 60s and 70s, even now when we we meet as a family, that's the music that we sing. Really? Yeah. Hindi music, not Carnatic music. Interesting. What about Tamil film music? Uh, So when I moved to uh, Chennai, I found in my guru uh, someone who, who had a very broad view of music, a broad vision for uh, any student of his to to keep what one has grown up with. So I remember many classes at the end of it, he would uh, break into a composition in, uh, say, Meg Malhar and tell me, you know, have you heard the song of Mehdi Hassan? Have you heard the song of Lata Mangeshkar? Can you sing the tune for me? So that uh, that really moved something within me that if somebody like him could say this to me, um, I... I that I should keep that music fresh and growing within me. And he's the one who told me that if you get uh, an opportunity to sing under a music director from whom you think you would learn, you must not turn down that offer, but take it up. This is your teacher, Lal Gudi Jairaman. Now, this is very interesting because when you talk to researchers and others uh, on what they have found, uh, through their research, in uh, through their research, is that Carnatic musicians tend to be very stiff. This is a stereotype, and uh, don't like getting outside influences, especially in North Indian film music and guzzles. Right? 
So how is it that Lal Gudi Jairaman, who comes from an established family of musicians, I think his forefathers were associated with Tyagaraja, did you ever ask him? He had a year for anything that uh, would touch his soul. And he sought that kind of richness. Wherever he travelled, he looked for music that would uh, be part of him because it touched his soul. And that's why... Um, I wasn't surprised when he told me about Mehdi Hassan from Pakistan being the music musician that touched him most. I wasn't surprised when he asked me about the oldest of Lata Mangeshkar tunes as much as he tried to create um, in our mind the, uh, a sacred aspiration for Tyagaraja. Um, because that was what he was, that was his soul. He kept searching for beauty around him in, in, in any form. So it, for some reason, it didn't come as a surprise to me that he would have heard Lata Mangeshkar or he would have liked music from across the borders. Did you choose him or did he choose you as a student? I think it was destiny uh, because when I heard him for the first time in a live concert in, in Bombay, all I wanted to do is pack my bags and just be in the space that he is. I wasn't sure that I was even... Uh, in any way going to be accepted as a student, I was ready for that. I would, I don't, I didn't know what I was thinking, but I just wanted to be in that space where all I could hear is his music or how he created it, and it's my biggest for good fortune that he accepted me and decided to teach me. So you approached him. I didn't approach him formally. It just all came together. Um, he visited our home and he heard me sing and he said. Uh, you must be in Chennai and uh, if you come to Chennai, you must learn good music. I'm in Chennai. So there were these hints. And then before I knew, I had packed my bags and jumped into the train to go to Chennai. Oh, so you just decided that he was going to be your next teacher. Yeah, this was in 1987. Then soon after, you got an opportunity to work with uh, A.R. Rahman. 89, 90. And he had just made Roja. Yes. He was big. I mean, that was his first film, you know. Your first film with him was Iruvar. Iruvar means uh, two. And after that, what was your association with the film industry? Uh, before I sang for AR, um, I, Rahman, I also sang uh, some lovely songs for the maestro Ili Raja, sir. And um, uh, post Iruvar, a few more songs with Ili Raja. But since all my concentration and focus was in Carnatic music, trying to learn it and early years of performance... Um, I I could and I did only what I got in terms of very few songs for for movies. Most of the time and energy was spent on learning Carnatic music with my guru. So you continued to learn until he passed away? Absolutely. And uh, what did you learn from him? Because you're an established singer and spent many years... Um, practicing and learning, what is it that one learns at that stage in life from an established and progressive music teacher? I grew up with music around me. As I told you, waking up to my father's practice and um, going to sleep with the strains of music that came out of the classes that both my parents taught. So naturally for a, a child like me or a young student like me, I was singing without realizing because I was picking notes from the air and singing Kritis and Varnams. And it was my mother's dream to see me as a stage performer. So at a very young age, um, I was singing in in all the typically uh, Mumbai uh, festivals like the Ganesh Chaturthi or the Navratri. Or if there was a family wedding, definitely my brother and I would do one-hour concert, stuff like this. But for a long time I was doing this because probably I knew how to do it a bit and also because my mother wanted me to do it. When I came to Chennai to be in the space that my guru created in terms of sheer beauty because of sound, um, that was a calling because there I was searching for meaning in what I had done in all these years as a child, um, not knowing where this would lead me, not knowing how much I know, how much I need to know. I had no questions. I just came as a clean slate. But with every class, with every day, 
as weeks rolled by, as months rolled by, and years now, 25 odd years, he made me believe that this is the world one has to be in. He made me believe that if you have swaras or ragas for friends, then you need nothing else. And he made me adapt to that intensity and richness and thickness uh, in a very beautiful way. For someone who grew up in Bombay, nevertheless, having grown up in an atmosphere with music, I still wasn't a sure musician. I was just singing. But he made me sink into it completely and he made me believe in myself, which is uh, what was most important for someone like me at that point in my life. And to give myself selflessly hours and hours of being in the music. So this is what I learned. So just focusing on the art and not worried about whether you'll get money or whatever. No, I, I had no clue where this road was going. But I just wanted to be there. And I think that was the most beautiful part because I was just taking in everything around me as given uh, by him.